Hello, church. Welcome to Cape Assembly Online. If it's your first time joining us today, if you would text Connect CA to 97000, someone from our team will let you know all that is happening here and how you can get involved and be a part of it. We believe in the power of prayer, and if you are in need of prayer today, you can text your prayer request to 97000. And now let's get ready to worship together. <laughs>
Hey, CA family, welcome to week number three of here. You know what? We are here in the middle of this pandemic. We are here in the middle of this election season, and we are here. So where are you at? You're right here with me right now. And in fact, week number one, Pastor Ken has talked about how we have a great worth to God. And, and honestly, we, have, we exist to have a relationship with God. And you know what our number one job besides having a relationship with God is? To add values to others. So what are you doing right now? You're adding values to others by watching here right now, by adding value to your life and relationship with Jesus. Last week, we talked about this. If you doubt, you're not alone. You know what? You can, you can see, you can touch, so you can believe. And you know what? We even closed up, but your problems are not the problem. Your view of God is truly the problem. So we wanted you to take and replace that doubt with the memories of what God's did in the past, the promises in scripture and his words over your words. And you know what? We wanted you to realize this, that you are still in progress. You're not perfect yet, not till you get to heaven. You're still in progress. And we wrapped it up with that verse that Jesus said to his disciples, as the father has sent me, I am sending you. So what about today? Where we go from here on out in this series called Here? Well, let me just give you a number. How about that? 525,600 minutes. 525,600 minutes. I'm not going to sing it to you, but you know what? The famous musical called Ren. Many of you are probably singing it right now, but it's actually the number of minutes in a leap year. Do you know that the average span of a lifetime now is 72, according to 2018 census? That means, guys, you're meant to live only to 70, according to the census. And ladies, to, you were supposed to live to 75. Congratulations, you're going to live longer. But what that means is that we have this, is we have 26,280 days. And if you want to geek out with me, that's 37,843,200 minutes. And I know what you're saying this morning, why are you telling us this? Because here's why. Here's what I really believe. Everyone that's watching right now, everyone in that is around the world has a responsibility for their life and way they manage it. Because this is what we know is this. Irresponsibility is very difficult to see in a mirror. Irresponsibility eventually becomes not just your responsibility because it's not just a solo thing, but the irresponsibility actually, not having responsibility in your life actually impacts people around you. It impacts your children's children if you're not careful. Irresponsibility can be solved today by seeking God more. It can impact your marriage, your family. It can impact many things in your life right now. If your life is not managed, it's mismanaged. So I believe we need to capture this opportunity. We need to capture that God has put something on our tables right here, right now for this moment. And I believe that we are in the right side of history like we talked about last week, CA family. You have the greatest opportunity, not just to share what God has done in your life, but help others see what he can do in theirs. We can show people what the kingdom of heaven is all about. Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven many times. But one of the main ways he did is in parables. And parables actually, literally, truly, most of the time, actually have one meaning throughout the whole entire parable. In other words, there were stories, there were, there were sayings of stories back in biblical times that sometimes Jesus would take, adapt, and, and truly make them super extreme. So today's parable is kind of extreme. In other words, it's meant to carry what's called shock value. It's actually one of the most famous parables of all time. It's called this, the parable of gold bags or the parable of talents. See, the parable of talents is actually really originally translated as bags of gold and silver. A talent was worth about 20 years of work and labor. And you think about it this way, 20 years of worth labor. That is huge, CA family. Think about this for a moment, how big that is, 20 years. How much money do you make in 20 years? And this parable 
what we find out is this, is that Jesus begins to address the people. It says this, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And let's read it out of Matthew chapter 25. He says this. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who has called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Let's pause for a moment, CA family. Type below, entrusted. Because listen, entrusted means this, to assign responsibility for doing something to someone or to put someone in, into someone's care or protection. L truly, what entrusted means, it means to lead towards expectation about what you should do. See, if a talent was worth 20 years of labor, just think about that for a moment. Think about what he does next. He begins to tell us in verse 15, to the one he gave five bags of gold, to the other one, two bags of gold, and to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then the master went on in his journey. See, like we said before, CA family, a talent is worth 20 years of labor. See, I did a little bit of research because I'm a geek like that. Think about it in this sense is this, is that the average person, according to median income in 2018, makes about $33,000 a year. That means that talent of 20 years wages would be $660,000. Imagine that. Someone shows up and says, I'm putting $660,000 worth of gold in your hands and I'm entrusting you to do what's right. Think about it. five bags. The guy that received five bags this morning, CA family, that's $3.3 million. And I know what you're saying, wow. The guy with two bags, that, that's literally $1.3 million. And maybe it's really ringing that song to you. If I had a million dollars, I would buy you a fur coat. No, that would be cruel. Wow, what would you do with a million dollars? What would you do if somebody said, here's a portion of my fortune. Here's a portion of my wealth and I am putting you in charge of it. And I'll be back one day. See what you can do. You know what? What we find out in this moment is this. Jesus is trying to illustrate this, that life is not fair. Not even in the point of this par parable. And I would even say this, life is not fair unless you're the one receiving the most. And as we find out in life, life is not fair unless you're at the fairgrounds. Little pun dad joke there. And this is what it says on in verse 16. It says this. He says, the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one who had two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who received one bag went off, dug a hole into the ground and hid his master's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the master of this, those servants returned to settle accounts with them. The man that received five bags of gold brought the other five and said, master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold and I have gained five more. Wow. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man, we find it verse 22, that with two bags of gold also came and said, Master, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share the master's happiness. Pause for a second. CA family, do you realize one had five, one had two, but they all received the same reward? Life's not fair, not even in parables. In fact, let's continue to figure out what happened to the person who had one. Then the man, listen to this, who received one bag of gold, said, Master, 
He said, I knew, hear the language, you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and I hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you, he says. His master replied, you wicked, also on other translations, worthless, lazy servant. You knew that I would harvest where I have not sown, gathered where I have not scattered seeds. Well then, you should have put my money and deposited with bankers so that I would have returned and I would receive it back with interest. He said to the other servants, so take that bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10. And here's the next phrase that Jesus says about how life isn't fair, how life is not proportioned equally. Equally, He says this in verse 29, for whoever has been given more, they will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Then he says the next part, which is frightening. And throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness, in the darkness where there will be weeping and a gnashing of teeth. I know some of you like me grew up, you're like, is he talking about hell? No, <laughs> because the weeping and gnashing of teeth in this translation is the same one that is used after they're done stoning Stephen and Acts. In other words, they stoned Stephen, they dropped their rocks, and out of frustration and anger, they started weeping, gnashing of teeth, gnashing of teeth. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. In other words, this, he wasted his opportunity. CA family, he wasted his opportunity about the opportunity of what God has entrusted in his life, the responsibility put on his table. He wasted it. And then he was kicked out of the inner circle. Because this is what I believe we need to hear from God. This is what I believe this whole parable is about. God doesn't try to fix the unevenness of life. There's unevenness in circumstances, environment, and wealth in this world, and God doesn't fix it all the time because it's a finite, not an infinite. These things, honestly, they care, we care a lot about them, but God cares more about your eternity with him than anything. So what do we learn from this parable? What do we learn from this? I believe there's three things that we really truly need to learn from this parable. Number one is this. Everyone gets an uneven amount of opportunity. Everyone gets an uneven amount of opportunity. Everyone gets an opportunity though. Did you hear that? Everyone receives an opportunity, CA family. You have an opportunity. I have an opportunity. Yes, they may be uneven in many states and forms. You might have hair and I don't. That's uneven. But listen, you have an opportunity. We just need to gather responsibility. Listen to what Jesus says about that. It, he says, again, it'll be like a man going on a journey. And he, listen, and he calls all of his servants and, and he trusted them and trusted them with his wealth. It's the 525,600 minutes. Everyone gets the opportunity in a non-leap year, 525,000, it's 600 minutes. You get to live out. See, hey, family, listen. You get the $600,000 question. And I know, you know, please, just think about it. That one bag of gold was worth $660,000 today. The two bags of gold was worth over $1.3 million. The five bags of gold was worth over $3.3 million. That's mind blowing. But this is what I know. I believe what's far in greater value, what God cares more about than that finite things is the infinite. It's your eternal life and the influence you have on others' eternity. Let me repeat that. I believe it's far greater value than any bag of gold. And that's what Jesus is trying to teach is your eternal life and the impact you have on others. CA family, we are called to be 
productive. We are not called to just bury. We're called to multiply. It's not enough to say that I didn't waste what you gave me, Lord. I didn't waste my talent. But we have a responsibility to invest, not bury. We have a responsibility to multiply, not just add. It's not enough to have. We must do. Let me repeat that. It's not enough to have. We must do. We must multiply what God has placed on our lives. He has entrusted us so much more. One thing I heard recently from a professor at Southeast University, his name is Dr. Davis. He said, you would think of life differently if you grew up in a cancer ward. I know that word cancer immediately brings shock in your life because it's not normal. In fact, many people watching this right now, you may even have it or you're afraid to get it because it is abnormal to have cancer. It is a frightening thing. But if you grew up in a cancer ward, that's all you would know that everyone has cancer. What if I told you that cancer in some aspects and some forms is, is, is like it spreads but impacts lives so negatively? But what if I told you in the same figuratively that if you grew up with people that didn't take responsibility for their actions, didn't take the responsibility what God has put on their table, you would think it's normal to not take responsibility. It'd be normal for you to sin. But CA family, what if I told you there's a different type of family you can grow up around? It's a family of God, a family of community you can be part of. And, and listen, listen, there's an opportunity that you could succeed at. Yes, we all have a responsibility, but listen, you can invest, not bear. You can multiply, not add. We can do and multiply, church family, because everyone gets an uneven amount of opportunity. But listen, also, everyone is held accountable about what they do with it. In fact, we find out in that part in Scripture in verse 24, he says this. He says, Then a man who had received one bag came to the master and said, I knew that you, and maybe you need to unline this in your Bible, you, because this happens, he's starting to change tone. I know that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and I hid your gold in the ground. See, and he brings it to the table. Here's what belongs to you, to the master. See, he whines and blames the master. He literally changed so This is your fault that I wasn't responsible. And that's what we hear from our children. This is your fault why I haven't cleaned my room. That's irresponsibility. This is what irresponsible people do. They cast blame. And this is why I really believe that we like to take the easy way out in this situation. We blame others. It's other people's fault. That's why I live this way. It's my current circumstances in my life they're so horrible. And I know you, you watching right now, if you begin to type below your current circumstances, we would be like, wow. But listen, my God is greater. You may be blaming your upbringing. If my parents would have raised me better, if I had a set of parents, my life would be completely different. You have a spiritual father that owns a cattle on a thousand hills, CA family. You can make an impact. You can carry and have responsibility for your actions. You may blame your environment or even your wealth. I don't have enough money. But listen, if somebody gave you $660,000, yes, it would change your current circumstance now, but it, wouldn't, it would magnify your habits and your behaviors. In other words, it wouldn't change you as a person. It would just magnify you. And many times, many people blame God that he's doing all this on purpose. Listen, our God's not. In fact, what his heart beats for is eternity with you. One of my favorite inventors of all time said this. His name's Benjamin Franklin. He said, he that is good at making excuses is seldom good at anything else, right? What if I told you that your decisions actually begin in your DNA? In fact, what we know according to recent studies that 60% of what you decide to do is predetermined by your DNA. Wow, 
60% of your decisions are predetermined. You would say, I don't have a prayer. <laughs> I know, we probably say that, but no, 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 listen to this. This is beautiful. Focus in. Focus in with me, CA family. Focus in. Your spiritual DNA has resurrection power. It overcame the grave. It overcame the best that the devil can do. Our God rose from the dead and walked and over 500 witnesses saw him for a period of over 40 days before he ascended to heaven. And our very own God will come back soon. Soon he will come again for his saints. We have DNA with resurrection power, CA family, that we have the DNA of resurrection power so we can, we can handle the responsibility. We can invest, not bury. CA family, we can multiply, not add. It's not enough to have. You need to multiply, not add. And I believe that everyone's gonna get that uneven amount of opportunity and we will all be held accountable for that uneven amount of opportunity. But listen, the last thing is this, everyone, in fact, type it below, everyone. Everyone has to give an account in front of God for what they will do with the uneven amount of opportunity they receive. Listen, our God is coming back soon. I truly believe it. In fact, Matthew quoted Jesus a chapter earlier and Jesus said this, but concerning the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels or heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father knows when he's coming back. The writer of Hebrews said this, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to those who, have, who are eagerly waiting for him. John the Revelator, the teenager that followed Jesus, shared this about his vision in Revelation 1. Behold, he is coming on, with, on the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierce him, all the tribes of earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. See, family, our king is coming soon. The resurrector is coming soon. The son of God will come back soon. But listen to what the happens in the parable. Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven. He gives two responses about his return. First number one is this. First response is, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, so I will put you in charge of many things and come and share the master's happiness. See, Option number one is well done, good and faithful servant. But option number two is this. Listen to this. You wicked, and other translation says worthless, lazy servant. Wow. Let that sink it for a moment. Well done. Are you wicked or lazy? You'll have many, or listen, he'll take from you and give to the person that has ten. Are you gonna make excuses or make something happen? Are you gonna take the opportunity of what God has put in your plate and say, praise God, I got plenty of children. I know there are a lot to feed, but God has blessed me beyond measure. Praise God, I got a, a, my own business rather than, oh man, I have to go to work again. Praise God, God has placed them on my table. Praise God, God has given me a man. Yes, he blocks me out there in the middle of a football game because football is godly. But listen, praise God, God has blessed you with a man that goes to church that is sitting there. Praise God. A little joke aside. See, hey, family, God has blessed us with an amazing opportunity in front of us. An amazing opportunity. So where do we go from here? Three things. I'll start today. What do we do now? Start today. Start today. You can start today right here, right now with the responsibility God has placed in your life. You can start today and start small. Do one step at a time. And I don't think you need to pause anymore. Let's just start now. What's this start now? Dive into the scriptures. Start God with the opportunity in front of you. Maybe there's a neighbor that needs the story, your story of what Christ has done in your life. Because here's why. 
I believe we waited too long. I believe the opportunity is now, CA family. And in fact, what I refer to many times is the five monkeys. You'd say, what do you mean? Yeah, the five monkeys. See, it was originally, it was originated by a man named J.R. Stevenson in 1967. He came up with this illustration called the five monkeys. And in fact, many people watching right now, you've heard of the five monkeys before. The five monkeys is they put five monkeys in the same cage, a big, huge, large cage. And at the top of the steps of the cage, they actually put a bundle or what's called a hand of bananas. And they place that hand of bananas up the top of those steps. And every single time, one of the five monkeys would try and get the banana. Here's what they would do. They would put ice cold water on all of the monkeys. So one by one, they would attempt. And one by one, they'd try, but every single monkey would be soaked down with ice cold water until the moment came when none of the five tried to get the hand of bananas. And listen, the next, the next thing they did is they take one or two of the monkeys and replaced them with other ones. And when those monkeys tried to go up the steps, the other monkeys flogged them. They in fact attacked them to make sure they would not get in the steps so they would not receive the ice cold treatment of water. And then we find out later that J.R. Stevenson tells us that eventually all the monkeys were replaced and no monkeys tried to climb the steps towards the bananas. Why would you tell us that? For generations, possibly in your family, or maybe even for the last six months during this pandemic, this election season, you've been paralyzed by fear. You've been paralyzed possibly by, by wonder. You've been paralyzed even, even by, I, you're not good enough. See, hey, family, you're a child of the most high God. You're part of a royal priesthood. You're a co-heir in Christ Jesus. The old is gone and the new has come. You need to step into the promises of God, step into the calling that God has put in your life. Listen, you are valuable. God has placed you. Yes, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, I am who I am, but no, our God is the great I am. CA family, everyone gets the 525,600 minutes in a year. Everyone gets those 72 years of, of opportunity. We need to make them count. We have a responsibility to invest, not bury. We have a responsibility to multiply, not just add. We have the responsibility that God has put on our plate to live our lives as true and proper worship, as living sacrifices to God. As I was talking today, I just really feel that some people you're watching online today that you haven't been the greatest steward of your life. And even the last couple of months, you, you haven't given God everything. In fact, other things have taken his position. He's been number two or three in your life. He hasn't been the center of your world. If that's you, we're gonna do things a little bit different here today. I want you to say this prayer with me. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for burying my talents, my gold, the priceless forgiveness that you provide. Empower me with your Holy Spirit to step out, to multiply, to step out and spread your gospel again. Empower us, Lord Jesus, in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you're watching, it's great to have you here at part of week three of here. You're here for a reason. And I'm going to be talking next week, the next step of why you're here. God bless you. See you next week here at Cape Assembly Online. Thank you so much for joining us today, church. If you made a decision for Jesus today, we want to encourage you to text YESCA to 97000. We want to support you with next steps on your faith journey. And also, don't forget to stay connected on our social platforms. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Cape Assembly Online.